Do you wanna get faster at riding your bike? In this video, we're gonna go through five things that fast cyclists do that you might want to as well. Fuel well. This goes for all types of riding. It doesn't matter how well trained you are, if you don't fuel well, you won't be performing your best and worst case, you'll end up bonking and then end up crawling on the bike. Fast riders will tend to have good habits around fueling. So always eating before they ride, always eating during the ride, using carb drink, and the habit of eating little and often will be ingrained in fast riders. You'll see pros eating like clockwork during pretty much any race, but particularly stage races. My friend Will is the nutritionist from EF Pro Cycling. We've done a few videos together before, and I'll uh, put links down below to those, but he'll recommend sometimes up to 120 grams of carbohydrate per hour depending on the weight of the rider and the race. Now, that is a lot of food. Not all training sessions require that though. If your session is under an hour, then you generally just need to eat beforehand. If you wanna start creating these habits and you're struggling, then you can set up an alert on your head unit. I have mine set up, so every half an hour, it just gives me a reminder to eat. Little and often is the best way to go and the most stomach friendly too. Carbohydrate mix in your bottles is also a brilliant way to fuel without having to chew. Sometimes you'll be doing races where you don't particularly want to eat and you still need to get the carbohydrate in, particularly with with longer sessions, I really struggle personally eating after a few hours, so carbohydrate mix is a savior for me. There's loads of types of pre-mixed carb drinks that you can buy. I've been using the stuff from Sturka recently, which is like stomach friendly, but you can mix your own on a budget. If you do a scoop of maltodextrin, a dash of sugar-free squash, a pinch of salt, ideally pink salt, because that has different electrolytes in, and then fill the rest up with water, you got yourself a carb drink. A little bit more work than the pre-mixed stuff, but it does the job. Bottom line, you need to fuel properly if you're gonna train hard and reach your full potential. And that's the thing all fast riders do. Fast riders get aero, aerodynamic. But this doesn't mean just go and drop loads of money on supposedly aero kit. Think about position on the bike and kit choices that really do make a difference. Riding over 20 kph, wind resistance is the dominant force that you have to overcome. And luckily, some of the more effective methods to get more aerodynamic are actually quite cheap. This topic can get really complicated and sometimes some things that look aero or people think are aero are not. So let's just go through the basics here. First of all, position on the bike. You wanna get narrower and lower. So tuck your head down and your arms in. The reason aero bars are used in time trialing is basically to try and get that frontal area of your body as small as possible. But you can get similar effects on your road bike as well. You just wanna tuck your elbows in and what feels narrow usually is. Second thing, tighter fitting clothing. So a jersey and shorts that fits nicely will go a long way in making you quicker. And a skin suit, like a one piece suit, goes even further. Some tests have shown that going from a jersey and bib shorts to a skin suit actually gives you more saved power than going from a road bike to a TT bike, position included. So that goes to show how much difference just clothes can make. Fit here is key though. So a baggy skin suit with lots of creases in it isn't gonna be as fast as a tight one. Aero overshoes and aero socks, they make a fairly big difference and super cheap. And shaving legs and arms. Might seem silly, but it's free and does make a difference. Then you get onto helmet, wheels, bike frame, which are all significantly more expensive, but quite small gains compared to what you can make with clothing and position of your body. So you might as well do those cheap ones first before delving into the more expensive kit. Recovery drinks and meals, but really that 15 minute window that you have after finishing a training session or a race is really crucial in getting that first bit of recovery in. With training volume, usually comes consecutive days of riding, and if you're riding two days in a row, it's important to get your recovery started straight away. Most easily done in the form of a recovery drink. It's a bit of a myth that a protein shake will do the job. Carbohydrate is actually the more important component. Studies are showing that four to one carbohydrate to protein ratio is what you wanna be aiming for, but there's ongoing debate and research going into this. What I'm trying to get across just get a drink in. My favorite thing to drink as a recovery drink is my protein whole fuel blend. This is basically fake fuel. I've been buying this for ages. It's actually like a meal replacement thing, but also the perfect amount of carbs to protein and it tastes nice like chocolate. So 
what's not to love? Way cheaper than fuel and basically the same thing. It's really easy to forget. I did all the time back when I was racing, but forming that habit of always having your drink ready, pour some water in, down it, ready to go, makes a big, big difference, especially when you have accumulative days of training. You'll nearly always see professional athletes after races downing a recovery drink, but it is most important if you're training the next day. Funnily enough, pro cyclists train consistently. It's all well and good riding hard, but if you don't train consistently, it doesn't matter if you followed everything else on this list, you're not gonna get fast. You're better off training three times a week consistently than training seven days a week and then having random weeks off. In the hierarchy of training needs, total volume of training is top priority. And that's what consistency helps towards. It adds up quickly if you do multiple short sessions a week. And that's probably the best way to approach it if you're not a pro, you have other things in your life that you have to balance with training. And it's what most coaches will recommend. Maybe it's your commute to work or evening escapes. All of these count towards training volume, even if they're not structured sessions. When I was being coached, anything other than a poodle to the shops without sweating was considered volume. So it's always worth recording your rides, even if they're short, to keep tabs of your volume. Never stand up when you can sit down and never sit down when you can lie down. That's nothing to do with cycling. I think that's a Winston Churchill quote, but you kind of get the gist. Rest properly. Resting seriously is a thing that all fast cyclists do because it's the only way you can deal with a big training volume. A typical week's training for a pro cyclist might be about 20 hours in the saddle, right up to 30 hours plus if they're on training camps. That is a lot of stress on your body. So reducing activity elsewhere is really important to be able to sustain it. Of course, there are fast bike riders who aren't pros as well, but I guarantee they'll have similar habits around rest, recovery, fueling, all the things we've covered in this video to be able to operate at that level. If you had all the time in the world, then feet up on the sofa, having a nap after your ride is gonna be the best course of action. No extra strenuous exercise at all, unless it's gonna be beneficial to the sport that you're training for. Granted, this isn't the nicest lifestyle to lead. So you need to weigh up your priorities. There is more to life than being fast on a bike, but do you wanna do well in your race? You need to balance these things. In addition to this, sleep is also very important. If you have a high training load, then you need more sleep. It seems to be about an hour extra that will be beneficial compared to someone who's not doing any activity. So try and incorporate that into your training if you're doing a lot. So that is a list of stuff that I don't do but should do, but it's really hard to stay on top of. I really hope those basic ideas and tips were useful. In the future, I hope to do some more videos along these lines, but perhaps a bit more in depth to actually get Will from EF Pro Cycling, Coach Ken involved, and see if we can go into these topics in a bit more detail. If you have any questions, put them into the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you have any training tips or any habits that you've developed to be able to perform well, then let us know in that comment section. Thank you as always for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. <sighs> Recovery drink.